Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for Math 085. This is section 2.13. We're going to deal with ratios, rates, and proportions. They're very similar. Um, the first example I'm going to use is my own household. In my home, there's myself, my two sons, my wife, and my daughter. If we're looking at a ratio of men to women in my home, there would be three men to two women. And how we read a ratio is we'd say a ratio of three men to two women. And that's how we would read a ratio. Now, we can also represent a ratio not only in the English language, but we can do it in a fraction. We can say that there are three men for every two women in my home. We can also use colons, a third way to represent that. And this isn't uh, used as often in math as maybe the fraction form, because we're familiar with fractions. But we might use the colon as 3, and I'll put in my units, men, 2, women. But this is all essentially read the same, 3 men, 2, 2 women or three men to two women, three men to two women. So they all read the same. And there are three different ways to represent the same thing. So we're going to explore more on ratios, rates, and proportions. <clears throat> the first thing we want to do is maybe write these as a fraction. Now, to write these as a fraction, we've got to be careful. Sometimes they have a decimal. And what we're looking at is these do not indicate any units. So we don't have to worry about units like we did in the example. But we do have to worry about the value of the ratios. We cannot have a fraction that contains a decimal. So what I have to do is I have to move this decimal over one spot and put it over here. But in order to do that, because this is a uh, relation between one number and another, what I do to one, I have to do to the other. Just like if I wrote a fraction, what I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top, and vice versa. So if I rewrite this as 81, moving a decimal, something we'll explore in the next chapter, is essentially multiplying by a factor of 10. I moved it one spot. There's a difference between 1's and 10's by a factor of 10. So what I do to one of these, I have to do to the other. So if I imagine a decimal here, I've got to move it over here. And now I need something as a placeholder. So it would be 81 to 100 or 81 one hundredths. And then maybe we would reduce this. This is why we might write a ratio in terms of a fraction so that we can go ahead and reduce it. Now, in this example, there were no units. Now, in this example, we do have units. The units here is dollars. We might want to write this as a fraction, $46 to $102. And we'll keep that unit in there. Now this, we can see reduce this. So maybe we want to reduce this ratio to see what is the smallest ratio of one to another in this comparison. Well, I look at 42 and 102, and I recognize they could both be divisible by 2. So I divide this by 2 to get 23, and I divide this by 2 to get 51. Neither of these have a common factor. 23 is prime. 51 is 17 times 3. But since this is prime, there are no common factors. So it would be $23 to $51. So that would be our ratio. <clears throat> Let's look at these. What if they have units and they're different? Well, we have to be aware of units. And just like we couldn't have a decimal, so we wrote both numbers to not have a decimal, we have to be aware of these units as well. And we have to do something, a fancy term for it is dimensional analysis. We have to change the units to be consistent. I could say 24 cents to $1 is the same as 24 cents to 100 cents, because I know there are 100 pennies in a dollar, or 100 cents. Or I could write this as a dollar value by introducing a decimal. We know that 24 cents is $0.24. So either way I do it, here's where I'd use a colon, because I don't want to have a decimal in a fraction. So 24 to dollars to $1. If I did it the other way, 
I'd have 24 cents to 100 cents. Now, this is the form that I'd have to convert it to in order to use the fraction. 24 cents to 100 cents because this is something I can reduce. As a fraction, we always want to reduce. 24 and 100 are both divisible by 4. So I would get 6 cents per 25 cents. I apologize for the handwriting. We're getting close to the edge of the board here. So 6 cents per 25, or excuse me, 20, yeah, 25 cents would be the same as this ratio. So you see all the different ways we can represent it. We have to be very careful when it comes to their units. We're going to look at rates. Now, rates are special types of ratios where we're using them to compare different values. We've seen it a little bit in the units that we were working with. But a rate is a ratio used to compare different types of values. Now, these values, they're not the same units. We don't have to worry about converting them to be the same units because we're comparing apples to oranges. Uh, as an analogy there. One example of a rate that we see on a regular basis, anyone who drives or has ridden in a car knows that we measure our rate of speed in miles per hour. So this is a ratio, 55 miles for every one hour. So I could write this as 55 to 1, but I have to be aware that there are hours to or excuse me, miles to hours. These units, we cannot convert them. We can't write this as a unitless number because it's a rate. Rates have different units. Here's an example. If we have 12 tables for 24 students, and maybe I want to know how many students are going to be at a single table. 12 tables for 24 students, I can write that as 12 tables for 24 students. Now, these are different units, so they're not going to reduce away. They're not going to cancel. They are what they are. But what I do recognize is I can reduce the, the coefficients here, the numbers. 12 to 24 would reduce because 24 contains a factor of 12. 12 over 24 is 1 half. One table for two students. So now we know the units of how many tables we need for every two students, one table per two students. Here's an example. I want you to try it yourself. It says four inches of rain in 18 hours. Maybe in meteorology, we measure the rain. And over an 18-hour time period, we had four inches. Write the related rate and reduce just like we did this.